Well, we know there are a lot of you out there desperately trying to make sense of the crazy real estate market we're currently experiencing right now. And that's why, once again, we have with us best-selling author and appointed real estate rock star Frank McKinney to share his expertise as part of our Real Estate for Real Women series. Today, Frank shares his real unique insights on an area I know many of us are unsure of these days, whether it's better to rent or to own. Welcome back, Frank, and what is the answer? How about this? Mm -hmm. There are two right answers. Ah, okay. I prefer one over the other. Okay. But let's make an argument for both buying and renting. Okay, let's do it. And let me give you a little bit of a, of, of a personal story here if I could. As okay. you know, we left South Florida two years ago. We sold our house. We came back and now we're renting because we're unsure as to whether or not it's better to dive into the real estate market right now. So, and I know there are probably a lot of people out there just like me in the same boat. You are the real woman. Real estate for the real woman. That right. is a perfect example. First of all, what I would ask your viewer to do is consider what do you want to do? Let's okay. go with desire. Okay. Okay, well, desire first because right. some people, and is that desire, I would say most people desire to own their own home. If your desire is to rent, is that desire driven by fear? Maybe. For me personally, I'd say maybe. And I would say for a lot of people, mm -hmm. because why? Because of all these, the foreclosures, the devaluation of a lot of property in the United States, all around the country, different rates, depending on where you live, but there isn't a place in the United States that property values have gone up over the last three years. Right. But I want to get back to that desire. If you desire to own the American dream, which is owning your own home, and, and you think that perhaps today would be a better time to buy than last year, two years, or, or three years ago, um, and your credit can withstand the scrutiny, because mm -hmm. let's face it, there are different underwriting standards for buying a home today, uh, then I think it's time to go out and shop. First question, though, is can I afford to buy versus paying rent? It's a very simple formula out there and to, to determine if it is affordable. 50, 50, 5 -oh major metropolitan areas were surveyed recently. In half of those areas, it is cheaper to buy than it is to rent based upon this simple formula. You take the price of a home, say it's $100,000. You take the price, what it would cost to rent that same home, $1,000 a month. Multiply that 1,000 by the 12 months in a year, you get 12,000, divide that into the 100,000, you get 12%. If that number is 18 or lower, it's more affordable to own than it is to rent. So I've answered the affordability question. How's my credit? Is my credit worthy of buying a home? First of all, go to your bank and ask that same question. If the answer is no, it's not time yet, one of the best ways to reestablish your credit is to rent for a while. What is a while? Two years. Okay. Two years, unless you've lost your house to foreclosure. Uh, but even somebody who's gone through a short sale, who owned a house before, sold it get back to the bank for less than what it was worth, about two years to reestablish. Why is it so short? Because there's so much inventory out there right. that the banks have to get off their books. Many of those homes are beautiful. And I, I contend that you don't want to buy that perfect, perfect home. You want to go in, perfect to you, yes, yeah. but needing a little work, you're going to get an even better deal. That's a, that's a great point because you and I were talking about this a little bit off camera, how, you know, in the beginning you want to buy this perfect home that what, that's what, that's turnkey that you can just move in and not have to do anything. But given this real estate climate, what you're saying is, you know, listen, it might be better to go into something that needs a little bit of work. You already know you're going to get a tremendous deal, right? Right. For the most part, given this real estate market. So I think, do you think it's a matter maybe of, I don't want to say lowering our expectations, but changing our expectations. Changing your expectations in this sense. Do not buy a home that you cannot afford. Okay. Okay. That's where we got in trouble before. In my, my book that we talked about last time I was here, Burst This, there's a very long chapter that talks about the most obscene four-letter word. That's the title of it, the most obscene four-letter word. It's not the F word or the S word. It's the D word, debt, D-E-B-T. What it does to us as consumers and us as a society when we encumber ourselves with too much debt, that's what got us in trouble before. We bought the $600,000 house when we should have really bought the $300,000 house. Fortunately, those esoteric eccentric mortgage products that we all could go get, the 125% loan to value, negative amortization, those are gone. I'm glad to be back in the, in the days of a little bit more realistic approach to buying what we can afford. You and I talked about down payment. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a down payment for a home, it's not time to buy. And, and I'm laughing at you because I told you that I wanted to make a, a, a huge down payment on the house, and you said, no, 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 you don't want to put that much money into your house. I think people do that, Frank, and I know in my case because you just want to be sure 
that in case the bottom falls out again, all is right with at least your world, which is your home. But but at the same time, if the bottom falls out again, which I contend it will never fall out in your children's children's lifetime like it just fell out, mm -hmm. have some money in reserve. I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm against debt. I'm an advocate for using your money, not other people's money, when it comes to buying your home. But still, having a little bit set aside in the event that property values didn't come, your house is not an ATM. You cannot go to it like you used to be able to pull out money anymore. Those days are gone. That's not what we want to use it for. You have three beautiful young boys. You want to use it to raise your children, to enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and oh, if you've bought it right and improved it right, maybe buying that fixed rubber we talked about, the rate of appreciation across this country, as evidenced by 77 years of, of historical data to support this, the rate of appreciation of your house will outpace inflation by ever so slight, but that's okay. Because you're going to stay in your house 10 years right. or 20 years. And when you leave, just like it used to be, your house will be worth a little bit more than what it was when you first bought it. More for you because you're going to put down more money. All right. So with about 30 seconds left, is it better to rent or own? I would advocate now, today, it's much better to buy than to rent. Use that formula we talked about. And if it doesn't apply in your neck of the woods or across the country, then maybe you want to wait a little bit longer. But what are you waiting for? Right? We don't, the American dream has never been for rent. It's always been for sale. I'd rather everybody own by putting down a substantial amount of money, doing their homework on buying it cheap, buying a fixer-upper, and being willing to stay there for a little. And, you know, let's not flip these houses. Let's raise our families there and enjoy ourselves. You answered a lot of questions for me. Check, check, check. I'm all good, Frank. Thank you so much for being with us on the show today. All right. And if you have a real estate question for Frank, submit them by logging on to thebalancingact.com, and we'll see if he can answer some of your questions on an upcoming Real Women for Real Estate segment. You can also check out Frank's website. It's frank-mckinney.com for more of his amazing insights. All right. Good stuff.